Well, greetings to you, beautiful soul. If you're here listening to this episode of 10 Minutes of Bliss, thank you for coming by. Today, we're going to be continuing a very important conversation that started two episodes ago on the subject of the six basic human needs that drive every decision and action that we take in our lives. Two episodes ago, the link to which, by the way, can be found above or in the description, we started discussing the concept of where the six basic needs came from and what it kind of talks about. And we briefly touched upon the phenomenon the day before or within the episode before this, again, the link to which should appear above or in the description below, we got into resourceful and unresourceful ways that every human actually ends up taking actions to feed each one of those six basic needs discussed on day one. Today we're going to continue and hopefully finish off the conversation which we started on the topic of six basic human needs. I have experienced a massive perspective shift and truly been able to use this knowledge alone to create a paradigm shift within my own life and many of my clients in our consulting business, whether it's in the business and the consultation or the personal or relationship, have been able to take huge advantage of this phenomenon alone. So in the past episode, we discussed certainty, uncertainty and variety significance and we touched upon some of the particular behaviors that uh, could be taken and are common within each one of those needs and uh, we discussed which ones are resourceful versus unresourceful today we're going to continue on and discuss connection and love so within connection and love here are some examples of unresourceful behaviors things that we mostly see patterns of within ourselves and those around us one of those unresourceful behaviors uh, that satisfies the uh, connection and love is being needy um you know no descriptions needed for that uh, self-harm is another one uh, on healthy relationships connection through problem uh, such as drugs um, and uh, kind of things such as if you don't love me I'll hurt myself uh, now these are very unresourceful ways of experiencing connection and love and uh, again there is never much good news at the end of those stories uh, the resourceful behaviors, however, and actions uh, that uh, cater to connection and love uh, are seen in patterns such as sharing, uh, supporting others, connecting through nature, faith, self-love, self-worth, knowing one's true worth, unconditional love, and interdependent relationships uh, as can be seen here the nature of the behaviors that are resourceful versus unresourceful are completely of uh, are completely of opposite ends of actions all bait trying to satisfy the same needs. Next, we got growth. And in growth, for example, 
which by the way, now we are getting into uh, the territory growth and contribution. These are higher forms of needs that we all have and stepping into them, especially in a resourceful manner and uh, taking actions in that path would put us at a significantly different place where the paradigm and the experience of life will be entirely different. Uh, these are, by the way, also core needs because every human does need to fulfill these two. Otherwise, life will not feel fulfilling and content. So the unresourceful behaviors that happen for growth are information gathering, for example, without applying the information. Um, or simply trying to add zeros to how many dollars I have in my bank account. These are all absolutely unresourceful. And usually if you're, if one's trying to do those, then the, the same people tend to have unresourceful behaviors in other departments as well that accompany uh, as a package, if you will, uh, those uh, previous core decisions made in unresourceful states. And uh, the last, but of course not the least, least we have contribution, which is uh, paying it forward, for example, in resourceful states, paying it forward, that's, that's a uh, resourceful behavior within the realm of contribution, donating to charity, volunteering, helping people, doing things for others. Now, these are all done under the pretext of doing things, not expecting anything in return. So doing things without having expectations with the sheer and pure intention of just giving away. Uh, on the uh, contrary, we have the unresourceful behaviors that uh, are things such as giving uh, without learning to take care of self uh, or giving with the purpose of getting uh, or, you know, being a martyr. <laughs> yeah. Um, so these really are just some examples that will help us put into perspective what it means to be catering to our basic human needs in resourceful versus unresourceful ways. I was having a great conversation actually tonight with a very esteemed gentleman and uh, during our conversations, by the way, every consultation session or conversation we have, uh, it is always a two-way learning experience where I always, always will need to walk away also learning a few things and growing out of it myself as much as I try to do that to ensure that is a reality for whoever I speak with as well. And he pointed out something which I wish to discuss because I felt like it was just a brilliant conversation where he said that being resourceful and unresourceful manifests itself into our physical lives in, in our realities with the signs with the sim with their symptoms being able to achieve the dreams that we set for ourselves in the resourceful realm and in the unresourceful realm, not only not being t able to achieve our dreams, but also losing things that we already possess. So just to kind of think and figure out where we stay with this in our own lives, where we stand with it, I think that's a pretty good test to figure out, A, am I able to experience and 
achieved dreams that I dare to actually even make. Many people don't even dare to dream right now because they're so caught up in their own patterns. So first of all, do I have dreams? Okay, good. Am I dream- I'm achieving them? Okay, if yes, that means I'm being resourceful in catering to my needs. If not, then that's now a whole different conversation. Why am I not doing it? Am I not being resourceful enough in what needs I'm trying to satisfy through which actions and behaviors? And hopefully, lastly, I'm not losing and I'm not letting go of things that I used to possess and have and be able to experience. And again, these are just a few clues as to how we could pick up on these patterns and use them, leverage them to create change. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about three of the most important skills that we can possess in our lives to actually create change, massive permanent change in personal, business, and social lives. That's it for me now. Bye, everyone.